All right, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, the Dow is just bebopping around, uh, as down as much as 200 today, now down 55. So it's a little bit on the comeback trail from the lows of today's session. And um, Bitcoin continues to just hold on above 9,000 at 9,090. And uh, a close under 9,000 or end of day today or tomorrow, especially Friday, under 9,000. Could be bad news, could tank down, could get some consolidation here and bounce. So I'll keep you up to speed on that and keeping up us up to speed all the time. Uh, my buddy Frank Morano joins us. Hey, Frankie. Hello there, John. What's going on? Well, um, the markets are kind of range bound. Nothing crazy there. I, you know, I'm keeping a close eye on this overstock situation where um, there seems to be a nice recovery and, uh, you know, they're doing some innovative things. As, as you know, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, groundbreaking. So you got your dividend. Well, I, yeah, I, I did. I still uh, am trying to figure out how to how to cash it in. And it looks like it's down uh, a bit today, the stock. Uh, so we'll see what happens. You know, you can't go crazy. It's like a roller coaster. Right. Well, if anybody had staying power, it was you, because the stock two months ago was $4. So these days, right. you feel like you're That's up right. big, and now you're almost even. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, look, we hang in there. We fight. Um, exactly. What, what's tomorrow? We got Roger Stone. I, see, I saw some stuff on uh, Facebook that Roger's releasing more uh, details and stuff. Are we going to get any break? Anything breaking? You think? Uh, I hope so. Uh, you know, I don't have any inside information. Hopefully, he'll break some news with us. But uh, it's certainly. I saw the president tweeting about his case yesterday, so uh, I imagine that uh, Roger's got, got quite a bit to say. Well, yeah, right. We talked about that yesterday where he said, stay tuned. So maybe he's putting together a little Memorial Day package for uh, Flynn and Stone. You know, that would uh, be nice. That would be that would be great. And now um, after yesterday, did you have a chance to take a closer look at this Susan Rice contradictions about how she knew nothing about the uh, the investigation? And now she cited multiple times knowing all about it. Uh, you know, I looked at uh, some media coverage related to the email. It uh, strikes me as very strange. Her whole need to say that she had done everything by the book several times. It, uh, I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, it's like, you know, he doth protest too much. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like when you got to keep right. Why would you write an email to yourself saying three different times by the we did it by the book. We did it by the book. It's like it's like, you know. You had the whole dug in the woods with the lime and everything. You know, you right. know what I mean? You yeah, booked indeed. An, you booked an airline ticket somewhere else. <laughs> right. OJ special. But uh, how was your uh, commute today? I'm, I'm curious because I was out on the streets this morning and there was a lot of traffic in, this morning, a lot more than I've seen in the last couple of weeks. Well, there is a lot of traffic on the roads, but there doesn't seem to. I was in, for instance, uh, there was, uh, I was in, I think, two and a half hours of traffic coming home yesterday, mostly because of a, uh, a, a, a disabled tractor trailer on the Verrazano Bridge. So it took me a while to get home, and I wasn't the only one. But uh, on the bus itself, I think on the way in this morning, there were only, th I think there were four people on the way in, and I think there were three people on the way back here. Wow. So um, word is out of the airlines, this is, a, I can't understand this. They're saying that some uh, like business commuter routes are now getting filled up, you know, and I don't know if you've seen any pictures of people on planes. Explain, I'm trying to figure out now, why can't people go to work at, even if they're six feet apart, but people could sit three in a row, all the plane deep, a foot away from each other, some without masks on planes. It makes no sense. I can't explain it, John. I think it's very peculiar, the whole thing. Like, I would feel uncomfortable sitting in a middle seat right now. Um, well, I, as I understand, at least JetBlue is blocking off their middle seats. They're not going to, they're not going to sell the middle seats. Wow. So a major consumer complaint could be uh, remedied so, by coronavirus. Like that. Right. No, no one wants... You know, it could lead to the other seats being more expensive, but nobody wants the middle seat. It's ridiculous it, that there is a middle seat. Exactly. Well, look, I, I don't mind the middle seat too much, but but you're right. I, I'm in the minority. Yeah, you're seeing this uh, COVID pandemic 
lead to a whole bunch of situations that people have wanted to solve for a long time. You know, I've been saying for literally years that there's no reason we shouldn't have the Supreme Court proceedings, the hearings before the Supreme Court, the arguments live streamed on the internet and or on television. They, the court has always refused to do it. Now, in light of this pandemic, they're live streaming, at least the audio version, of these arguments. So that's a good thing. Uh, we, we see, as you mentioned, the middle seat situation. I'm hearing that uh, apparently Peter Luger's, the famed steakhouse in Brooklyn, is going to be accepting credit cards for the first time and making deliveries for the yeah, first time that, in their 113-year history. Now, you've been to Peter big. Luger's, John. Whenever you go there, people that. always want to pay with credit cards and are never able to. So yeah. now this pandemic Boom. is forcing these institutions, airlines, uh, Peter Luger's, and uh, you know, a number, do the what Supreme we wanted. Court. To do what the people have been demanding for a long time. So there are positive collateral effects. and I think this is forcing us to remake society in a number of ways. Fantastic. Quick break. Coming back at you right after this with Matt Conlin, president and co-founder of Fluent, right after this. Most financially successful people own assets that make them money while they sleep. They usually own real estate, vehicles, intellectual property, equipment, and more. These assets make passive income through leases, subscriptions, royalties, and fees that don't require time, energy, or attention. Your assets do the work, and you collect the check. So what kind of asset should you buy? The most valuable companies in the world, like Amazon, Google, and Apple, all have the same thing in common. They make a majority of their revenue from data technology assets. Storing, collecting, processing, and providing data. It's all about the data. What if you could own data tech assets with a low upfront cost? Introducing Apex, a proprietary technology built to process and mine data and render artificial intelligence and 3D gaming at exceptionally high rates. Apex Tech has partnered with SafeTech, a subsidiary of a publicly traded company called InvestView. SafeTech's business model leverages Apex technology to disrupt the multi-trillion dollar data tech industry, giving you the competitive advantage. SafeTech's growth strategy is to capture a significant share of the market. SafeTech will enter into a 60-month lease with owners of Apex Systems. Why would they do that? Why not just buy all the equipment themselves? The same reason most companies lease instead of own. To scale quickly, without the upfront costs, and for the tax benefits. So how do you get started? You purchase an Apex system. Then, you can lease it to SafeTech for 60 months at a rate of $500 per month. That's a total of $30,000 paid to you over the life of the lease. So what's your responsibility besides purchasing the Apex system? Nothing. During the lease, SafeTech is responsible for any maintenance costs to keep things running for you. Just collect a check every month for the next 60 months. This tremendous financial opportunity positions you to follow the strategies of the financially successful. You can leverage data technology to produce passive income that generates revenue without your time, energy, or effort. This is what is meant by creating multiple streams of income, but the opportunity to participate will not last forever. If this concept fits your financial goals, take action today while you still have the chance.